Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief and this week we're going to be giving you guys a more in-depth update on kind of exactly what happened. But sadly the hard week I had last week in losing pretty much all the fish except for one uh, being the firefish. So just as it probably caught you guys uh, to a surprise it caught me as well it literally happened within I would say within about two to three days it started with the cold tang. Um, I know a lot of people were commenting, oh, ick, 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 and believe it or not, it had nothing, or it wasn't ick. The fish might have had ick, but ick isn't what killed it. And again, not being able to know exactly what it was, I've narrowed it down to two things, um, either being brook or being velvet. I don't think it's velvet uh, just because it's, I mean, it's pretty rare. Uh, to find it's not saying you won't find it but it, it's pretty rare um, and also it's interesting that it took such a while uh, for it to come come out I've had uh, the fishes I hadn't added any more fish in about a month and a half uh, so that's pretty interesting to me also if it was velvet I would assume that it would have killed this guy too and as you can see he's beyond healthy he's eating very well so that kind of leads me to believe that it probably was Brooke. Um, as far as I didn't get any video at all, it happened so quick, I, I didn't get any video, but as far as the symptoms or what I was visually able to see on the fish, the fish was eating. Yeah, every time I fed it, it was eating very well. All of them were eating very well. And what really stood out to me was it had almost like a mucus, uh, really slimy, uh, stringy, uh, texture on the fins. I mean, it was literally the length of those, I would call them stringers, but the length of those things were about like that coming off the fins, uh, the fins and the skin. So as we know, that's something that's not common at all with ick. Uh, ick, you'll see just tons of spots. Looks like they sprinkled them. Uh, this guy did have kind of that sugary uh, texture that looks like sugar was sprinkled on, on them as you would see in, in Brook. Um, also with the skin being a little bit mucusy, so <clears throat> that kind of leads me to believe that it was Brook. The fact that it happened so quickly, um, again, kind of reinsures me that it was probably Brook or Velvet. I'm, again, I'm leaning more to Brook because it's just Velvet. I've talked to very experienced reefers and, and even stores and they just say, although Velvet isn't impossible to get, but it's a very uncommon uh, type of parasite in a fish but again I'm not trying to rule it out I'm just saying based off what I saw and based what I've been hearing I I believe it was Brooke so yeah obviously it kind of sucks and actually it really sucked I really really loved that coal uh, that coal tang I really loved those those clownfish I mean the yellow tang it yeah you know I I, <laughs> I would be lying if I didn't say I contemplated a little bit what, what I was going to do with this tank but as we all know there's I don't want to say it's part of the hobby, uh, but it's a very common thing. And that's also, I know a lot of people say, no, if you quarantine, that would have never happened. Well, possibly might have not happened to all the fish, but I know, again, talking to people, only because you quarantine doesn't guarantee that you're not going to lose a fish. And I think anyone that even quarantined can say that, that quarantine is not going to guarantee the fish from dying. Now it will obviously guarantee from that disease entering your system and thus wiping out more of your fish. That it absolutely will do. But uh, yeah, you know, quarantine also has its things. E you know, assuming a fish does have something, if it's not eating, uh, that's kind of when it really starts going downhill, even in a quarantine system. So what are my plans? What am I going to do? Obviously, as you guys know, I've always been a lot more attracted to the corals than the fish. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to start putting more emphasis on the corals for now. Later, you know, we'll worry about the fish and we'll get all that squared away. Once I feel pretty comfortable with the corals and we got them going in the right direction, I'll be a lot more happier to later, uh, you know, get the whole fish situation uh, figured out. I want to cover a good topic here on the corals themselves. So again, I want to share with you guys, not only the positives, I need to share the issues I'm having and what I'm dealing with. Why? Because this is only going to help you better your system so when you have these issues, you don't have to worry about them. Or you could worry about them, but you kind of know that there is a fix. Onto the corals, I've been noticing an issue with SPS. So we have SPS there, SPS there, 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 there. Excuse me, one down there. 
And what I was noticing with them is I've been noticing less and less polyp extension and more and more uh, browning on the coral. So a lot of the corals have been losing their color. Uh, the SPS, again, we're only talking about the SPS because the rest of them are doing really good. But um, I've been noticing color loss. So when it comes to color loss, there's two uh, things you got to look for. <clears throat> is the coral turning lighter in color, as in bleaching, or is it browning? And those two are going to determine what avenue you're going to take. If for any reason you do see bleaching, bleaching will go south very, very quickly within a few days, sometimes even hours. And that is 100%, not always, but most of the time strictly related to lighting. It could be temperature as well, but lighting um, in our scenarios, assuming you got a, a good heater, is going to be your issue. So if you do see that, immediately uh, lower your lighting intensity or place your coral lower to the bottom or in a lower part of your skate. In my scenario, I narrowed it down to it being browning. So with browning, it's kind of a different avenue. With browning, it could be flow. It could also be placement. It could be getting too little light. Uh, so in other words, increased intensity on the lights. Or another factor that I'm almost certain it is, is nutrients. So that breaks down to amino acids, obviously free fo uh, floating types of foods, and so on and so forth. So. I don't think it's flow. I have plenty of flow here with two Nero's side by side and they're, they're moving quite a bit of, of, uh, of water. I think I have them about 40%. So, and they're in an alternating motion like this and then like that. So I don't believe it's flow. I really don't believe it's lighting because if you guys ever saw my PAR video, I was able to measure how much PAR um, these corals here were getting. These, these bad boys here are getting about 2 to 250. Um, at the moment, so it should be fine. Um, I know the systems they came from, they were getting roughly about that. It's really apparent on that green slimer. That green slimer, to, as you guys know, a green slimer is super green. Um, that one, you just kind of see a pale, I wouldn't say white, but just like a you know brown look on it. Uh, same with this bad boy. And this one is kind of losing some of the green too. But, so what I've been really doing to combat all these things is I've recently gotten the Continuum, uh, a few products from Continuum. So I've got the Ocean Snow, I've got the Coral Exponential, and I've got the Element Amino. So these are obviously amino acids. And obviously, as you guys know, I'm a big believer of Polyp Lab Refroids. So these three together, I've actually been spot, uh, spot feeding. So as you guys know, spot feeding is kind of one of the best ways to help your corals recover from stress. Also. I've read great reviews of this amino acid to very quickly bring stress corals, either from browning or any other type of stress, uh, back to normal health. I've actually been dosing this one, uh, the recommended dosage, every day, and then all three of these get spot fed every other to third day to help it. So again, that's kind of what I'm doing because I believe it's a nutrient issue. I don't think it's a lighting issue. I don't think it's a flow issue. Um, and that's why I'm addressing it. And indeed, when I test my parameters for nutrients, guess what? They're low. And that is obviously has to do with that big old ball of Chato we have on the bottom. I'm probably going to start decreasing the time it, it's on for. I think it's on for like 12 hours. I'm going to slowly cut that down. I think I'm going to come down to eight, uh, seven or eight hours. Why? Because I feel it's doing too good of a job. It's a good thing, but it's doing too too good of a job. I'm trying to see. Other than that, um, there's been no algae issues. Coraline has beyond been been growing in the system, so I'm very happy. Actually, next video I'm gonna be uh, doing, I'm gonna be talking about the coralline and how the whole seeding process has been coming. I mean, it's been doing great. You can really see it all over the uh, the rock already. I'm trying to see any topics that I haven't covered uh, yet. Holy crap! Look at that, I was just about to end the video and look what I just found. Look at that. It's a nudibranch. Now that, that is gonna have to be addressed. Holy crap. <laughs> well, and that's crazy, I dipped everything in here. Everything in the system was dipped. Look at that freaking little nudibranch. Well, there you go guys, I've actually never dealt with those, but uh, <laughs> We're gonna get to see 
Actually, I gotta hurry up and end the video before that thing flies off. Anyways, that's gonna be it, guys, for the update for uh, this week. That thing is really scaring me. It's about to fly off. But yeah, we're gonna end the update. If I had any rasses, I'm pretty sure they would eat that thing. Man, that thing's bugging me. But, all right, let's get back to it. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the update, guys. We're gonna end it here. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think, first of all, with the fish and what I witnessed and what I believe caused the death of them, sadly. Um, I'd also love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on what I'm experiencing currently with the SPS. Uh, they're still alive, they're still eating, just really getting that brownie, and I believe it's low nutrients. Um, there's just too good of an export system in this tank. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear it. If you aren't subscribed, uh, please be sure to subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.